You're very welcome to this Irish Morley webinar for the Environmental Farming Scheme. My name is Brian Irvine and I will be the chairperson this evening. I've been involved with beef and sheep development work, agri-environment schemes, and I'm currently the senior biodiversity technologist at CAFRI, where our team has a role in providing EFS training. This is a short event tonight, so after my introduction, we will only have one presenter, uh, Terence Henry. Terence is also a CAFRI biodiversity technologist based at Greenmount. Terence has been involved with lecturing at the College in Conservation and Biological Sciences and with agri-environment schemes for many years as an agri-environment advisor. He is specifically going to look at the technical detail of the Irish Morley option in the EFS scheme. Jerry McGurr from Countryside Management has kindly joined us this evening for the question session. Jerry has many years experience of scheme work, particularly agri-environment. Uh, countryside Management are the branch who are responsible for running the scheme. You have been invited by letter or email where we had a valid email for you to tonight's event as you are an Irish Moily option participant. So thank you for attending. It gives us an opportunity for us to update you and provide you with communication channels for yourself to forward queries. Right from the off, I would like to thank you for taking the interest to support the conservation of our iconic Irish Moily breed. As we learn more about conservation grazing and habitat management, we're only realising now the importance of retaining cattle breed genetics, uh, also the benefits of the foraging style of the Moily and other traditional breeds like it. Uh, I would also like to thank the Irish Moily Breed Society for their assistance with uh, the cattle register and for access to the website photographs. Now, sometimes an inspection claim time errors arise. And this event is aimed at minimising those errors. So you have as positive an experience of the EFS scheme as possible. We want you to maximise the benefit to your farm, business and to the local environment from the EFS scheme. Now at this stage, I'm going to hand over to Terence, who will run through his presentation. Over to you, Terence. Uh, and thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, as I say, this short presentation on the environmental farming scheme will look particularly at the, will only cover the Irish Morley cattle option. And uh, as Brian said, <coughs> Jerry McGurr will join us later, you know, if there's any particular questions coming. Can I just thank the, you'll see on the pictures here, courtesy of the Irish Morley Cattle Society, and they were very generous in uh, letting us use their pictures. Just a, a couple of slides and to start with about Irish Morley in general, just as other people will be joining the webinar, just to give them a couple of minutes. This rare cattle breed originated in counties Leitrim, Sligo and Donegal, uh, as you know. Now, it was popular uh, throughout Ireland in the 1800s, particularly, particularly in the uh, South Ulster, in the Drumlin land of South Ulster. Uh, but uh, on, in 1979, it declined to near extinction. In fact, worldwide, there were just 30 cows and two bulls, and both those, the, the two herds were in County Down. So it contracted very, very significantly in the late 70s. I've seen from doing some research that the numbers then increased to, I think it was 230 in 2005. And the latest figures I have there are, uh, there are 900 now fully registered, 900 Irish Morleys fully registered, 500 of those in Northern Ireland, 250 in the Republic, and then in England, Wales, Scotland, and the rest of the world, 150. So that gives a total of 900. So it's nice to see a success story uh, where our, an iconic breed like this is increasing in numbers. Because as Brian hinted out there, once genetic diversity is lost, you can't get it back again. Uh, the, this is a polled animal, as you know, without horns, and characterized by, you know, it's, it's red or mostly red with the white line or finching on the back and then white underparts and red ears and red nose. So that's a description of the phenotype, as you well know. Uh, they are the cows are medium size up to you know maximum about 650 kilograms they're easy on ground 
and ideal for extensive grazing, though they will poach softer ground at that weight. Uh, they are long recognised as a dual purpose breed uh, with milk yields uh, up to 500 litres and a high butter fat. And the beef is recognised uh, for its great tenderness, uh, highly marbled uh, and distinctive flavour. So it really is uh, quite a, 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 a superb type of beef. The animal itself has a docile temperament and will develop a thick winter coat so it outwinters readily. So they're hardy animals. Uh, now, uh, those first couple of slides just point out a wee bit about the significance of the breed and its distinctive meat taste. What I would like to say is, and stress, is the more we know about the breed, the more likely we are to conserve it. The point there is you can't conserve something unless you appreciate what it is you're trying to conserve. But this is a great example of a success story thanks to yourselves. Now, whenever the letter went out to you, uh, I asked, or we did ask for um, questions to come in. And one of the contributors who emailed me sent me this about the standalone option with the Irish Morley cattle. And this is a quote. It says, the scheme has been a fantastic help to the breed and extremely important for its future development. And it's always nice to get positive feed feedback like that, you know, a fantastic help to the breed. And you saw there from what I said, the numbers 30 odd in 1979, 230 in 20, 2005, and up to about 900 fully registered animals today worldwide. Uh, as far as the EFS, now I'm into the nitty gritty of the EFS uh, option. The minimum claim is 0.8 of a livestock unit. And the maximum claim is 16 livestock units or what is in your agreement. If you agreed a lower livestock unit at the time, say five or six livestock units, that is your maximum claim. And the livestock units are based on the age of eligible female animals on the 1st of January of the claim year. So those have to be eligible on the 1st of January of the claim year. The payment, as you know, is £95 per livestock unit. Uh, if you have both a wider and a higher agreement, your claim for Irish Morley can be solely on the wider or the higher agreement, or can be split between both agreements. However, it cannot, as I said earlier, cannot exceed 16 livestock units or whatever is in your agreement. And you see that 16 livestock units, you may only say that is your maximum. You may wish in a particular year just to claim, say, 12 livestock units. So that uh, there's flexibility within the agreement to allow you to claim whatever you have that particular year. Uh, now, the, if you go to the information sheet on the Irish Morley, the claimed number of female Irish Morleys must be aged six months or more on the 1st of January in the claim year. So if we take this particular claim year, 2021, the youngest animal would have a date of birth of the 1st of July, 2020, or earlier than that. So remember the, the animals must be, the female animals must be aged six months or more on the 1st of January in the claim year. The second point in, these females must remain in the herd for the full claim year. And the claim year is the 1st of January right through to the 31st of December. The animals must all be registered with the Irish Morley Cattle Society breed register. And then at claim, as you'll be familiar, 
you need to provide, you need to make your claim for the number of livestock units, and you have to provide air tag numbers for all claimed animals, so that there can be a cross-checking with our uh, animal plant health information system, that's APHIS, and then the IMCS breed register. So you provide those ear tag numbers of all claimed animals. And then if there's any replacements, for example, during the year, we'll come to that later, you use an EFS SAF3 form to do that. Now, on, it is very important to stress that there's a full check of all these conditions before payment. So, Whenever you make your claim, as I say, for livestock units, and then the, uh, you give the air tag numbers, it is fully checked that these animals are the correct age, that they've been in your head for the full claim year, and that they're registered with the Irish Money Cattle Society. So there's no way you can get round this. Every claim is fully checked. Now, as the breed is smaller than average, an Irish Moiley cow over 24 months is equivalent to 0.8 of a livestock unit. A female between 12 and 24 months is 0.6 of a livestock unit. And a female 6 to 12 months equates to 0.4 of a livestock unit. So and I believe this is from talking to my colleagues who make the, who deal with these claims, this is one of the problems that was encountered. The number of livestock units claimed on your single application form is never equal to the number of air tags provided. I'll repeat that. The number of livestock units claimed can never be equal to the number of air tags provided. Because if you look at the top there, one Irish moil cow is only, of a, is only 0.8 of a livestock unit. So let's do this. Let's give you a couple of examples of this, with a, you know, just to stress this point. Here's an error claim. Uh, you know, the option is native breeds. The code is IMC. The unit type that you're claiming is livestock units. Now, this particular business has an amount of grade of three livestock units. And they've claimed two. And if I just press, and they've given two air tag numbers. Now there's clearly a, an error there, because say that was two cows, then this the amount claim can only be 1.6. You see there, 1.6, uh, or say the these two air tag numbers refer to one cow and one heifer calf at between six and twelve months, 0.8 and 0.4 only comes to 1.2. So do you remember the message at the bottom of the previous slide? Uh, the number of livestock units can never be equal uh, to, to the number of animals claimed. Uh, another example of this then, this person or this business has an amount of breed of five livestock units and they've claimed 3.6 so that's below them i'd agree that's fine and if we just simply go here they've provided five ear tag numbers and this will work okay uh, because four cows at 0.8 of a livestock unit each and one heifer calf at 0.4 will give the 3.6 livestock units so 3.2 if you like plus 0.4 We'll give 3.6 so that that will work okay there are other permutations for this for example if, if they have three cows and two heifers between 12 and 24 months that also comes to 3.6 you see at the top here i say this could be a correct claim so it may not be say that one cow there which is 0.8 and then four heifer calves uh, which is uh, 4 by 0.4, which is 1.6, plus that would only come to 2.4. So it could be a correct claim, it may not be. So uh, if I just stress this point with the next couple of slides here, so if I just look at this, it 
shows us here on the left the stock type, whether it's cows or heifers between 12 to 24 months, or heifer calves 6 to 12 months. We've got the appropriate livestock units here, and then the numbers on the farm on the 1st of January 2021. And you see these three figures here, 12, 8, and 6, uh, falling into those three categories. So it's 26 animals in total, but 16.8 livestock units. Once you multiply that by that, you come to 9.6. Now, the agreement allowance here was 16 livestock units. So that claimant will make a claim for 16 livestock units, not 16.8. And this slide then is the final one on this. The same number of uh, cattle here on the 1st of January 2021, 26. But because there are different numbers in each category, they come to a total of 15.6 livestock units that this business has. But in their agreement allowance, this fictitious one, they just had 12 livestock units. So their claim will be 12 livestock units. Now, they've got more than that. So it, it's a useful one just to explain this. If, for example, an animal, one of these cows dies, then they're, they're, they're down 0.8. So there are plenty for replacements here, as we'll see later on in this uh, presentation. So replacement animals then, you must inform DERA uh, within 10 days of the loss and or replacement of an animal. And that's the email address. That will be on the screen quite a bit tonight. So you need to inform DERA within 10 days of the loss of a, or, and or replacement of an animal. Uh, my advice, uh, you know, is to provide all ear tag numbers, you know, of any animals that die or are sold or whatever. Uh, do it promptly. None of us are perfect at administration, but I, if you're like me, you forget quite quickly that something has happened. So if you remember to do that on the day that the animal is sold or replaced within the herd, that will help keep on top of the uh, administration. Uh, a replacement animal then must be registered with the IFAS, as in your herd, within 42 days of an animal dying or, or being sold. Uh, so you need to do that within six weeks, register any replacement animal with, uh, within the IFAS system. Uh, and if a claimed animal uh, dies or is sold and is not replaced within 42 days, you must submit a claim amendment form uh, I'll show you an example of this later on, EFS SAF 3 form. So you complete, say, one of your animals dies or is sold, and you're not going to replace that ever within your herd, then you need, the onus is on you to submit a claim amendment form. Nobody will know that. Uh, 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 so if you go down, say, two animals, that's one point, say, two cows, that's one point six. Uh, livestock units uh, that will not be there whenever they do the claim checks. And if you keep yourself right by submitting an EFS SAF 3, uh, we'll see in a few minutes, it will prevent you uh, from suffering from any penalties or any reduction in the payment that you're due. So I'm going to deal now with over declarations and the impact of them in the last um, four or five slides. So. So there are a number of examples here, and they are all taken from the terms and conditions of the scheme. Uh, and I think it's matrix four at the end of the terms and conditions. So there's need, no need to write anything down. And uh, It's just really to stress to you the importance of getting the claim right uh, or, or, and informing uh, DERA of any changes in livestock units over the course of the claim year. So this equation here, I'll be repeating a couple of times. Uh, they, so the OD is over declaration here. So the percentage over declaration 
is the number of livestock unit over declared divided by the number of livestock units that are eligible or determined multiplied by 100. So I'll repeat that a couple of times uh, in each of our examples. So now if we take example one of three examples coming up, say there are up to three animals over declared, then your payment will be reduced by the percentage over declaration. So um, up to three animals can be one, two, or three animals over declared, your payment is reduced by the percentage over declaration of livestock units. So take this, uh, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Uh, take this uh, just example, which I just reveal this line by line. Say for example, somebody has 10 cows approved, approved in their EFS agreement and claimed 10 cows, right? That is eight livestock units, 10 by 0.8 gives it. Now a cross check with the EFIS system, you know, the cattle uh, animal traceability system, reveals that only eight cows are eligible. So the number of over declaration here, the number of livestock unit over declared is 1.6. So it would be eight minus 6.4, gives 1.6. That's the number of livestock units over declared. And if we just follow this equation, you know, which I'll get used to after this example, I hope the number of livestock units over declared divided by the number of livestock units el eligible multiplied by 100. And you'll be able to see this is 1.6 over declared divided what was eligible, which is 6.4. So if I just reveal that to you, and that's a 25% over declaration. And going back up to the red writing at the top, your payment is reduced by the percentage over declaration, which means your payment is reduced by 25%. So the claim is reduced from £608 to £456, which is £152 or 25% reduction. I stress there is no need to worry too much about the details because this will not reflect your individual case. So that's, that's the simplest over uh, declaration. If we go to example two now, here in this scenario, here there are more than three animals over declared and the, over, over dec the percentage over declaration is more than 20, but not more than 50 percent you end up with no payment so take it in manageable chunks more than three animals over declared so we'll go down to this first there's 20 cows approved and claimed 20 times 0.8 will give 16 livestock units and this business has claimed the 16 livestock units but admin checks show that only 15 cows are registered with the Irish Morley um, Cattle Society breed registered. Uh, so here you'll be able to work out that that's, uh, sorry, 15 by 0.8 would give the 12. Now you will see the number of over declarations here for livestock units is four. It's 16 minus 12. Okay, are you with me? And then the next part of the equation, remember this, percentage over declaration, which is the number over declared four, divided by the number eligible, which is 12 multiplied by 100. Now four divided by 12 is a third, multiplied by 100, which is 33.33%. That figure there. So if I just simply go back to the top again, this 33%, sorry, if I go, there's five animals here, uh, you know, 20 have been claimed with only 15 registered. So that is more than three. And the percentage over declaration is more than 20, but not more than 50. It's sitting here. Now, look at that red writing up there, no payment. So that's my last line for that one. No payment has been made. And just as a matter of interest, the correct claim would have been 12, these 12 livestock units times 95 pound for each livestock unit 
which would have provided the business with £1,140. So that was a, a, a costly error uh, in terms of uh, the claim form. Right, my third and final example here. Now, if there are more than three animals involved and more than 50% livestock in it over declared, there's no payment for the claim year. So let's do this one. Say there are 20 cows approved and claimed, which is our 16 livestock units. Remember 20 by 0.8, 16 livestock units. And in this case, now this is, um, I hope unlikely to happen, but at inspection of whatever kind, whether it's through uh, APHIS or IMC register, there's only six cows and six heifer, six young heifer calves have been, uh, you know, are eligible. So six cows is 4.8 livestock units. The six young heifer calves, six by 0.4 will give 2.4, which gives 7.2 livestock units. So this person has claimed 16, but there's only 17.2 livestock units eligible. So I hope you're with me now. You've worked out now the number of livestock units over declared here, which is going to be the top figure here minus the bottom one, which will give us 8.8. .8. So the number of livestock units over declared is 8.8. .8. Uh, our little formula, if I just go to this, our little equation, the percentage over declaration is going to be 8.8 .8 divided by 7.2 multiplied by 100. There we are, 8.8 .8 divided by 7.2 multiplied by 100, which is a whopping 122%. So just going back up to the red, writing at the top, more than three animals, I mean, there were 20 cows here, but it's only six and six, 12. That's eight difference. More than 50% over, live, more than 50% livestock unit over declared. Here we're sitting at 122. Well, you can work out here. There's no payment for the claim year. Uh, so now the correct claim would have provided 684 pound. Now, in other words, those 7.2 times the 95 pound per livestock unit. Uh, would have provided 684. But there's an additional penalty here of the number of livestock unit over declared times 95 pound, which is 836 pound of an additional penalty. Uh, so that, that's what I'm pointing out there is not only is there no payment here, but there's an additional penalty, which is the number over declared times the payment for the livestock unit which comes to 836 pounds. So if I just go down here, there's one slide here. So if we look at this here, uh, that the, the, this refers to the previous slide. There were 7.2 livestock units eligible. Multiply that by 95 pounds, which gives the 684. If I just go up, that's that R684 here. Because that's, there's no payment that's withheld, they don't get anything, so the amount of paid is zero. But this additional penalty then is 836. And if I just read this, this further penalty will be offset and recovered against claims made in the following three years. Any penalty amount that can't be recovered after the three years will have the balance cancelled. So I just stress that because of the rules uh, of the scheme, uh, you do need to avoid penalties as much as uh, as you possibly can. So just the concluding uh, comments now. Know your eligible livestock, Irish Morley livestock, the year tag numbers and livestock units on the 1st of January of the claim year. Uh, and you claim, as I stressed at the beginning of this presentation, you claim livestock units, not numbers of eligible female Irish Morleys. Remember, they had to be over six uh, months age on the 1st of January, had to remain in the herd uh, for the full claim year, the 1st of 
January to the 31st of December, and they had to be registered with the Irish Morley Society. So it really is about keeping your records and keeping them correctly. And if there are any changes, please get in touch, you know, through the email address, which we'll show again in a minute. Get in touch that very day or, or write it down somewhere that you have to email them or let them know right away. So inform Dara of any changes, death sales replacements at that email address, and do that on the day it happens if you can, uh, you know, get around to it. Uh, you might need to amend your claim using, um, you know, the EFS SAF 3. Again, you send that to the same address. Whenever you're putting in these SAF 3s or emailing us, include your business number, all your tag numbers, and full details of changes within the herd, deaths, sales, replacements. Make sure to do your replacements on APHIS within uh, 42 days, uh, you know, of say the death or sale of an animal. Uh, just uh, finally then, this is an example of a SAF3 form. Uh, you, this is on the DERA website. So it says, this is a special form for EFS. You should be doing this for any option, not just uh, Irish Morley. But in this case, if I just take you through, the field numbers and management units are not relevant here, and field area, maximum eligible area is not relevant, relevant here. But the option, traditional native breeds, the code IMC, Unit type is livestock units here, and you can see this person, this business had 16 uh, agreed, uh, but now they are claiming 3.2. That's our new claim. And then the additional information, I just made this one up. Uh, uh, it just simply says the original claim was for four livestock units of Irish Morleys. Uh, one cow, remember I said give the ear tag number, that will begin UK, by the way. Uh, one cow has been sold uh, and give the date of the sale and is no longer in my herd, so the claim is reduced by 0.8. The business number, name, address, uh, date, and your signature. And if you either hand that form in to near a direct office or email it or post it to that address, it'll keep you right. Uh, so there we are. That, uh, Brian, brings the uh, sort of presentation to an end, and I hope that was useful in stressing. It's one of those options, as I say, where there really shouldn't be, uh, you know, errors if we just keep on top of it. Okay, Brian, so I'll hand back to you now. Thank you very much, Terence. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you. Look, it's it's not easy going through the numbers, but that, that that's great. Um, Folks, I, I don't want you to uh, be concerned with the equation either. That was uh, Terence using examples to show people what what the result is. And I guess from our point of view, um, we would prefer that uh, that farmers were in receipt of the the full amount that the, the they should be whenever the cattle are on the ground there. So it's about minimising uh, those errors. Um, there's there was a simple Excel spreadsheet in, in Terence's presentation. We can we can pop that on the on the web as well. Sometimes errors are made at application, and quite often then it it comes from the natural sequence in a herd where livestock um, have to be replaced. Um, so look, thank you for some of your comments. So please feel free to to add more questions into the question pool. Um, some folks have been busier than others uh, writing this in. Um, so th there's a, a, a good question here. Um, uh, can there not be a time scale for breeders to trade stock, say October to end of December to, to, uh, to trade? I know with another question coming in, a suggestion coming in earlier that, that we should move the year from October to October rather than, than January to December. Uh, at this stage, we have, have little wriggle room. I'm going to go over to Jerry. Welcome, Jerry. And um, yeah. I wonder, Jerry, do you, 
do you want to make any general comment about the scheme and, and suggestions for changes or anything at, at this stage? Well, we're at this stage, we're pretty much tied to the scheme. The scheme runs from the 1st of January to the 31st of December each year, and that's the application period. Um, I suppose the flexibility within it is that um, you have a period of time to replace animals. And you always have the option of the FS staff three form if you are not able to replace and therefore using that, you can um, reduce your claim without facing any penalty. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, and, and look, we're, we're I'm I'm uh, delighted that we have a scheme for to reward Irish Moyle. Uh, it is complicated by the nature of the, of the livestock units and by normal um, replacement policies. It's also complicated by the fact that some people have very small numbers and therefore that changes the percentage over declaration quite dramatically if you keep don't keep on top of it. Uh, another comment in, in, the, in the questions, uh, uh, it, it, somebody's asking how many breeders have registered for the event. So we had 20 registrations, there was 95 uh, folks are in the EFS option. Um, so we wrote to everybody, uh, those 95. Unfortunately, we don't have emails for everybody. Um, and certainly if you didn't receive an email uh, invitation, it would be good to send your email to the EFS uh, email address on the, the, the link there. Um, another comment is that uh, sometimes the dearest staff make mistakes uh, in working out uh, penalties. Um, sometimes uh, dearest staff um, uh, get have issues with the 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 calculations um and certainly that can happen and it's it's quite important in this whole process that you're aware of of your numbers um and, and that's the key bit and the, the point four is the point six is the point eights and and the replacements there a key bit here is is when an animal is eligible so terence when is an animal eligible uh, <laughs> Remember the first point, Brian, on this slide there that I showed way back. But uh, all female animals, which are aged six months or more, on the first of January of the claim year, and that's the same. That also applies to replacement animals. For example, if you're going to replace, uh, you know, an animal uh, in say for this claim year 2021 then that animal would have to have been born on or before the 1st of July 2020 so it would have been six months of mold on the on or before the 1st of January 2021 is that clear enough yes thank you Terence hmm. um, okay uh, a couple of uh, more questions are through um, Okay, and always a difficult one. If you lose some cows with TB and you don't want to replace them with TB in the herd, when it is out of control, are you still eligible for grant? Gary. Yeah, good question, Brian. Um, it would, in that, in that case, it would be best to um, state your case and put it forward into the FAS mailbox. Um, and there may be a consideration under that case for force majeure. Um, and it would have to be looked at in an individual case and um, it would be taken forward that way. Thank you. And I think that one of the key points we are we are here for is to encourage this communication, folks, and, and that EFS mailbox is fantastic. The other thing is so good about it is you get a written answer back, um, which is which is really useful. So that, that communication bit, uh, phone number, email, that's good. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, Thomas is asking us, uh, uh, can you join the EFS anytime? I'm not a member yet, but own a herd of 20 Irish moiled that are pedigree and not registered. 
Um, Jerry, I'll pass that one to you. Yeah, fine. Thanks, Brian. Um, the FS application period is open for hire and wider and, and is likely to be open in 2022. Um, it usually opens around April time for the hire and closes mid-May. For the wider, it usually opens in August and closes mid-September. Um, those dates are not set in stone. Um, and um, just look at the farming press and our publications and you'll find the details there. Or go on to the EFS website and you'll get further details. And if you are thinking of applying for EFS, um, do go on to the EFS website, look at the various options and plan ahead for your application. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, and that planning ahead is, is very useful because um, unfortunately, quite often we, we as humans leave it to the last minute sometimes and then we don't always get uh, all the options um, that we need or that we could use and I, I get that quite a bit. Folks are, are uh, frustrated in that they didn't put everything down that, that they should have done. Um, okay, thank you uh, for a clarification that um, Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so there was a, a query there about a uh, herd of Irish moil that are pedigree and not registered, and that, that's important. Um, the, the stock need to be registered uh, for us to be able to uh, fund them under this scheme. But that, okay. um, that interested person there, Brian, could register those um, cattle with the Irish Moil Society. And then they would become eligible. It's just the response is, you know, they're not registered, so they are no good. They're no good. They wouldn't be eligible at the present time. But presumably, there'd be no problem as long as they were confirmed that they were pedigree cattle. But then these could these would be registered. If the person isn't in the scheme yet, uh, you know, can you join the FS any time? Uh, I'm not a member, but that. Uh, person who's asking that question could get those animals registered and then you know going along with what Jerry said of the wider or whatever area they're in the wider or higher opened uh, again in 2022 could apply and the old systems go isn't that right yes if yeah. they can mm. if they can fulfill the the, the registration mm. process mm. yes mm -hmm. um, so certainly uh, yes need to get in contact with mm. the uh, the Irish Morley Society mm -hmm. uh, and I'm aware, yes, there's a bit of uh, communication going. Yes, registering older cows can be can be an issue. So okay. it, it, it is okay. it is it, but it is a case of, of of contacting the society and getting the 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 process started. And hmm. uh, because there's always more heifers coming on the ground, um, hmm. so so that's that's part of it. Um, and negotiating with the society. And that's, I must say, uh, and thank you once again to the society for uh, their assistance with the scheme. Uh, I think we're, we're coming through a, a consistent thing here is communication, SAF 3s. I know from talking to some uh, EFS participants, they're very used to using SAF 3s uh, and others uh, have never used one. Uh, it's something that we encourage you. If you go to the DARE website and you go to the search bar and type in SAF 3, uh, you will be able to locate one and you can uh, print it out at home uh, and uh, photograph it and email it in. You can print it out at home, fill it in and post it. Uh, you can fill it in electronically. Um, uh, so so certainly uh, those options are available. And I, and I hope you're looking at this slide that, that Terence is up with the phone number and the email address. Um, Certainly, when we review schemes, we look at how they can be simplified, and there is some suggestions uh, for for the simplification of this one. But uh, we are part of when we part of these schemes, we are unable to change the the rules uh, midway through. So this is the process we are in. Uh, we start off doing our calculations, and then we notify with livestock changes. Okay. Um, 
are I'm just thinking uh, we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Um, parents, have you any uh, last minute comments? No, I think I've covered most of them. The one thing I would say, all the examples that I showed there wasn't to terrify people uh, and put people off, but they, those examples are all in the terms and conditions. And there's one additional example there as well. Uh, it, it was just to reinforce and consolidate the point that whenever you make your claim, make it accurately, you know, based on livestock units, not numbers. But then if there are changes, and there always will be, that's the nature of farming. It's a, a transient. Things change over months. Animals die, animals are sold. If you can remember promptly to fill in an EFS SAF 3 and get that away before you're notified of, of an inspection, because if you were notified of an inspection, then it's, it's too late, you know, to make a change. So make the changes promptly. If you can do it on the day, well and good. It's really prompt. I think this is one of the options that's probably, you know, you can keep yourself very right on. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's one of these options that there shouldn't really be any issues with. Yeah. Uh, look, we're all busy and, and mm. it's, that, it's, that, it's that case of, of, mm. of communication. That, yeah. that is the key one. Uh, Jerry, have you any final comments? You know, I think the main thing, Brian, is to get, the, to get your um, claim right at the start and manage it throughout the year, either informing of deaths, um, sales, replacements, and if the placement doesn't take place, make sure you um, send in your SAF3 to have that um, animal or livestock unit removed from your claim, so then you don't face a penalty at the end of the year. Absolutely, and thank you, Terence and Jerry, very much. We would like to be uh, paying the full amount of Irish Morley payment that we should be, and uh, with extra communication, that will, would be the case. So, folks, thank you very much for your attention this evening. Um, before we close, I'll just remind you that there's a very short uh, survey to uh, three questions to answer um, that assists us with our planning of our next events. Um, thank you for your attendance and uh, good night. <laughs>